So, we will start with uh, a simplified circuit where I have a converter with three legs. and in each leg there are two thyristor valves. So, there are three legs shown here and in each leg we say there are two thyristor valves. So, say there are two ways of saying one is uh, uh, one can say that a converter consists of two basic commutation groups connected in series or there are three legs which is the usual uh, term used in uh, many books, three legs connected in parallel. So, there is one leg corresponding to each face of the AC side. So, we denote the three faces by the letters A, B, C. So, I have on the AC side a balanced three phase voltage source. So, let me call this voltage E A, this voltage is E B and this is E C. So, the valves are numbered as 1, 3, 5, 4, 6, 2. On the DC side, the representation is a current source which is constant. So, I have a constant current I D on the DC side. The voltage across the DC side terminals is VD. So, this is the simplest circuit where I have actually ignored the inductance on the AC side. So, let us try to analyze this. So, we saw that in the, uh, in the last class uh, I can uh, divide the converter into two basic commutation groups, upper commutation group and a lower commutation group. 135 from the upper commutation group, 462 valves uh, from the lower commutation group. Now, at any instant only one thyristor valve in any commutation group conducts that is one among 135 and one among 462. Okay. Now, uh, for the uh, sake of simplicity what we will do is we will assume that uh, gate currents are continuously given. Okay. So, if gate currents are continuously given it is as good as thyristors acting as diodes. Okay. So, if I say gate current is continuously applied. This is as good as saying that thyristor behaves as a diode. So, behaving as a diode means if it is forward bias it conducts, if it is reverse bias it stops conducting. Okay. Okay. Now, the question is in any commutation group 135 or 462 which is the thyristor valve that conducts. Suppose, I take the commutation group 135. So, how do we decide which one of the three valves 135 conducts at any time. If you notice the cathodes of all these thyristor valves 135 are at the same potential. So, the one that conducts is the one with ha uh, which has the highest potential for the anode. Similarly, if you take the lower commutation group 4, 6 and 2 the anodes are at the same potential. So, the one that conducts is the uh, one which is having the least cathode potential. Okay. So, that is the idea. Okay. So, uh, of course, one has to note that I mean uh, one of course, one can verify when one of the thyristors uh, valves uh, one of the thyristor valves is conducting the other two thyristor valves are reverse biased. Okay. So, that we will verify. Okay. 
So, we will assume some expression for this E A E B E C. So, I said they are balanced sinusoidal that means they are having the same uh, uh, RMS value or peak value and uh, the phased angle difference uh, between E A and E B or E B and E C or E C and E A is 120 degrees. Okay. So, let me assume some expression for E A E B E C. Now, the only choice uh, I have uh, is assuming the absolute phase angle. Uh, I have no choice over the relative phase angle. So, uh, the any two voltages will have a phase shift uh, or phase difference of 120 degrees. So, I will use this expression root 2 by 3 V sin omega O t plus I will choose an angle 150 degrees. I could have chosen any angle instead of 150. I mean uh, any arbitrary angle can be chosen, but I am choosing 150 for some reason it, it will it is a bit convenient for me as we will as we will see. Okay. So, V is a constant omega O is a constant. So, it is a sinusoidal waveform. So, what is this V? So, if I say this is the expression for E A what is V? RMS value of line to line voltage. So, please note the three voltages E A E B E C the three voltage sources single phase voltage sources are connected in y or star. So, if you look at the uh, uh, line to line voltage it has an RMS value v. Okay. So, that is E A. So, once I have E A I choose uh, I mean I have no of course, I, I have no choice over E B it has the same uh, RMS or peak value and it lags E A by 120 degrees. So, this is sin omega O t plus 30 degrees and E c lags E b by 120 degrees. So, it is root 2 by 3 v sin omega O t minus 90 degrees. Okay. So, let me try to draw the waveform of E a E b and E c. So, this is E B. Is the yellow line visible? Okay. Then E C lacks E B by 120 degrees. Okay. So, since it is free hand drawing please note all all these waveforms are sinusoidal waveforms though it, it may not slightly appear like that and they are balanced that means they have equal uh, mag i mean equal peak values so this is easy okay. so i'll mark some uh, uh, angles on the abscissa so if i try to take this instant as 0. The instant at which uh, E a and E b are positive and uh, equal in value. Okay. So, what will be the instant at which uh, E a is having a 0 crossing from negative to positive? 
please note our expression for a is this it is root 2 by 3 v sin omega o t plus 150 okay so this will be minus 150 so what i have shown is every 60 degrees so this is uh, minus 90 degrees this is minus 30 this is plus 30 this is 90 150 <coughs> 210 270 and 330 so i have shown every 60 degrees only uh, I mean uh, only thing is I have showed an addi additional instant 0 also. Okay. Now just now we saw that if I look at the th commutation group consisting of valves 1, 3, 5 at any instant the valve with the highest anode potential conducts. So, let us try to see or let us try to first mark uh, the instants uh, of the conduction of different walls uh, based on uh, the one with the highest anode potential. So, if I take this instant, so if I take this instant and if I take this instant. Now, from this instant to this instant, can I say one of the thyristor valves in the upper commutation group has the highest anode potential? Among 135, among 135, which one has the highest anode potential? 1. Okay. So, it is 1. Similarly, from here to here, from this instant to this instant, one of the thyristor valves among 135 has the highest anode potential that, that is that is 3 and again from this instant to this instant the thyristor valve 5 is at the highest potential. Okay. So, now we know which one among the thyristor valves of the upper commutation group conducts. So, if you have noticed we have considered one full cycle 360 degrees. See we started from minus though I have not marked it is minus 120, minus 120 and we go up to I have not again marked here between 210 and 270 there is a 240. So, minus 120 to 240. So, for one full cycle 360 degrees of the AC side, we, we have noted which thyristor valve of the upper commutation group conducts. Now, we have to also find out which one among the lower commutation groups conducts. Okay. So, I will just extend these lines. So, this is corresponding to 1, this is corresponding to 3 and this duration is corresponding to 5. Okay. Now, to find out which one among the lower commutation group conducts, I take this instant and this instant. Okay. Suppose I take the duration though I have not marked minus 60 to plus 60 minus 60 to plus 60. So, from this point to this point. So, there is one thyristor valve which is at the least cathode potential which one is that from here to here sorry yeah please uh, go to the circuit 462 which one among this 2. So, it is 2 again from 60 degrees to 180 degrees. So, for this duration one of the thyristor valves is at the least uh, cathode potential 4 and from 
from 180 degrees to 300 degrees it is 6. Okay. Now, though I have not shown uh, for the duration uh, up to 60 degrees uh, sorry up to minus 60 degrees. So, if I take this duration again this is of 120 degree width, but I am not showing the entire duration. So, if I take for this duration which is up to minus 60 degrees which the resistor valve is conducting 6. Okay. Now, again I have covered one cycle see if you look at the durations for which uh, either 2, 4 or 6 conducts I mean uh, the total duration is uh, 360 degrees. Now, what we will do is we will try to consider intervals of length 60 degrees suppose I take this or this <coughs> or this all these are intervals of duration 60 degrees. So, at any instant one thyristor valve in the upper commutation group conducts, one thyristor valve in the lower commutation group conducts. So, in the first 60 degree interval it is 1 and 6. Okay. So, uh, instead of writing 1 and 6 I say 6 and 1, 6 comma 1. Then in the second interval of 60 degree duration it is 1 and 2, then it is 2 and 3, then it is 3 and 4 then it is 4 and 5, then it is 5 and 6. Now, that actually completes one cycle. So, if you go to the next interval it is uh, corresponding to the next cycle again this same uh, sequence follows. Okay. Now, what we have done here is first of all we should note that we have assumed that uh, the thyristors are acting as diodes. For, so, continuous gate current is applied. So, thyristors are acting as diodes. So, we will go to the general case of thyristors are acting for as uh, devices for which they, they are used. Okay. Say obviously, if I use thyristor I in invest more money than uh, that I do for the diode and uh, obviously, it is used for control purpose. Okay. So, there is a provision to delay the uh, instant of uh, giving the gate pulse. So, actually gate current is not continuously applied gate current pulse is given. So, that I can delay the instant of turn on so that I get some control over some quantity. Okay. So, essentially I can get control over say the DC voltage for a given AC voltage I can get control over the magnet average value of the DC side voltage. Okay. Now, we define uh, one thing which is called uh, instant of natural conduction. Now, this is a quantity which is defined for any valve any of the 6 valves. So, instant of natural conduction <coughs> of a valve. So, what is this instant of natural conduction of a valve? It means the instant at which the valve starts conducting if the gate current is continuously applied. So, that is the definition. So, this is instant of or instant at which instant at which so, please note this is defined for each and every valve all the 6 valves. So, if I take one particular valve the instant of natural conduction of that valve is nothing but the instant at which uh, the valve starts conducting instant at which the valve starts conducting. provided I give continuous gate current. Okay. So, if gate current is continuously applied continuously applied. So, that is the definition of instant of natural conduction of a valve. Okay. Let us see for one of the valves what is the instant of uh, natural conduction. Suppose, I take the instant of natural conduction of say valve 3.
see, we, uh, I mean, the in independent variable is normally the angle omega OT. So, though we say instant, we refer to even omega OT as well. Okay. So, omega OT is equal to zero. So, you see that at omega OT equal to zero, three starts conducting. So, the instant at which three starts conducting is omega OT equal to zero. Now, this is the instant at which it starts conducting if gate current is continuously applied. Okay. So, what we do in practice is instead of continuous uh, gate current, uh, gate current pulses are actually applied which are delayed by a certain angle. Say it is as good as applying say there is one more uh, equivalence instead of continuous gate current diode operation is possible even if I just apply gate pulse at, at, the, right at the right instant. So, in the case of uh, uh, valve 3 if I uh, apply the gate pulse at omega O t equal to 0, 0 and the next gate pulse for the same valve at, uh, <coughs> at the for the same valve I am talking about the same valve 360 degrees. See you apply gate pulse only once in one cycle. So, see there is a diode operation possible even with gate pulse. If I apply uh, gate pulse to val 3 at omega O t equal to 0, 360, 720 and all multiples of 360. Okay. So, similarly for each valve instead of giving continuous uh, gate current I can apply gate pulses every 360 degrees at the appropriate instant to get diode operation. Okay. So, what is actually done is not is neither uh, uh, continuous gate current nor gate pulse to achieve diode operation. Okay. So, we want to have control. So, we, what we do is instead of continuous gate current, what is actually done is gate current pulses gate current pulses are applied which are delayed by an angle. So, which are delayed by an angle so we give a notation for this angle alpha. Now, this delay is measured with respect to the instant of natural conduction. Okay. So, by an angle alpha with respect to the instants of natural conduction. So, for this converter there are 6 thyristor valves. So, that means there are 6 instants of natural conduction. Now, for each thyristor valve we delay the uh, instant of gate current pulse by the same angle. Please note this alpha is not uh, uh, different for different valves. So, alpha is same for all the valves okay. for all the 6 valves the uh, delay is same. Okay. So, that is denoted by alpha. So, uh, there is a name for this uh, I mean alpha is called delay angle. So, for example, uh, if I take val 3 for example, if I take val 3, val 3 is turned on that means a gate, per, gate current pulse is given at. So, if the delay angle is alpha what is the instant of uh, the gate current pulse or the instant of turn on for val 3. See what was the instant for of natural conduction for valve 3? 0. So, this will be uh, I mean the instant of turn on in general is omega O t equal to alpha. See if you take valve 4 what is the instant of natural conduction for valve 4? 60 degrees 60 degrees. So, the uh, valve 4 is turned on at 60 plus alpha the instant of natural conduction for valve 5 is 120. So, valve 5 is turned on at 120 plus alpha so on. Okay. So, for val 3 it is alpha just alpha. Okay. So, what happens to the valve which was conducting earlier say val 3 is turned on at omega O t equal to alpha. 
what was the valve that was conducting before valve 3 is turned on? Which valve was conducting? Valve 1. So, what happens to that? That will turn off, it, it gets reverse biased. So, it gets reverse biased and it turns off. Now, this is irrespective of whether I give continuous gate current or gate pulse, it is irrespective of that. Say, initially I considered continuous gate current, I mean to explain the operation that was uh, operation as if everything is working, I mean all, all valves are working as diodes. So, irrespective of continuous gate current or gate pulses, as soon as valve 3 is turned on and it starts conducting, valve 1 will turn off. And uh, of course, one can verify that it is reverse biased. Is it not reverse biased? What will be the uh, voltage across valve 1 as soon as valve 3 is turned on? E B minus E A. E B minus E A. So, what happens to E B minus E A? Actually, I know that will be A minus E B. Yeah. E B will be negative. Say, uh, we define one quantity here for convenience voltage across a valve voltage across a valve whether it is valve 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. By definition it is the potential of anode. So, every time I would not say the uh, potential of anode with respect to cathode. So, I will just say voltage across valve 1 potential of anode with respect to cathode. of the valve. So, I was asking what happens to uh, the voltage across valve 1 when valve 3 is turned on. Okay, let us find out the expression for voltage. Okay. So, uh, when valve 3 is turned on at omega O t equal to alpha, turned on at omega O t equal to alpha. Then the voltage across valve 1, voltage across valve 1, is equal to. So, let us go back to the figure, the circuit diagram. So, 3 is turned on. So, 3 is turned on means uh, the valve 3 acts as a short circuit. So, we are assuming ideal thyristors. So, the voltage across the thyristor or thyristor valve is 0 when it is on or when it is conducting. Okay. So, this is a short, valve 3 is a short. So, what is the voltage across valve 1? It is anode potential minus cathode potential. So, it is E A minus E B. So, it is E A minus E B which can be obtained from the circuit diagram E A minus E B. Now, we have expressions for E A and E B. Now, using the expressions for E A and E B, can I say what is E A minus E B? E A is having a phase angle 150, E B is having a phase angle of uh, 30, root 2. First of all, this is a line voltage. Please note, E A minus E B is line voltage. So, the peak value is root 2 V. Sin omega O T uh, 180. So, can I say that it is minus root 2 V sin omega O T? Okay. Now, for the time being, let us assume that alpha is taking such a value that voltage across valve 1 is actually negative as soon as it stops conducting. Okay. So, uh, then what should be uh, the range of alpha? See, alpha can be 0. See, alpha is equal to 0 corresponds to diode operation. Now, if alpha is increased, okay. now beyond a certain value, what happens to voltage across valve 1? See, please note this voltage across valve 1 is negative only for omega O t less than less than look at the expression minus root 2 v sin omega O t it is negative only from 0 to 
pi by 2 is it pi by 2 0 to 0 to pi ok. So, for the time being we will assume that alpha is close to 0 ok. We will consider the general case uh, shortly. So, if alpha is say close to 0 ok. So, then as soon as val 3 is turned on voltage across val 1 is negative uh, as soon as it stops conducting ok. Now, uh, actually that is a uh, mandatory requirement because if the voltage across val 1 is not equal to a negative value for a certain minimum duration, then it will again start conducting without gate pulse. So, that is a property of the thyristor, I will not get into the device physics here. So, I mean I do not know whether you are familiar with that. A thyristor will actually start conducting again, see one, the thyristor once it stops conducting because current goes to 0. Okay. So, if it current goes to 0, it starts conducting, uh, sorry the current goes to 0, it stops conducting. Then as soon as it stops conducting the voltage across the thyristor should be negative that is anode to cathode voltage should be negative. If it becomes positive it is forward biased and without gate current it will start conducting if it is not negative for a certain minimum duration ok. So, that is one property of thyristor which we have to consider in this course of course in the analysis of any converter though we are assuming ideal thyristors see please note in other ways it is ideal. But as far as this aspect is concerned, we have to take that practical operation of thyristor here. So, there is a certain minimum duration. See, we do not want uh, the thyristor to conduct as soon as it is forward biased. We want the thyristor to conduct when we want, that is, when we give the gate current pulse. So, if it conducts just because it is forward biased, then the control is lost. Okay. So, whenever a thyristor valve stops conducting, then there is a minimum duration for which the voltage across the thyristor valve should be negative if that is not maintained, if it again becomes positive, the thyristor starts conducting again without gate pulse. Okay. So, this is something we will come back again. Okay. So, we will come back to that analysis again. Now, what we will do is we will try to uh, look at the different uh, intervals that we have seen in the previous uh, page. Say there are 6 intervals in one cycle, each interval is of duration 60 degrees. Okay. So, we will try to form a table and do further analysis. So, I will list all the 6 intervals and in each interval we will see what are the valves, there are uh, 2 valves, one valve from the upper commutation group, one valve from the lower commutation group that conducts. So, valves that conduct and we are interested in what is happening to the DC side voltage. Okay. So, we will look at the expression for the DC side voltage V d. See V d is see if you go back to the circuit V d is the voltage across the DC side terminals. Okay. So, we will look at the expression for V d and we will also look at voltage across one of the valves. There are 6 valves. Now, one can show that there is symmetry. If you look at the voltage across one of the valves say valve 1, the voltage across valve 2 will be similar to valve 1, in fact identical to valve 1 except for a phase shift. So, voltage across all the valves are identical except for phase shifts. Okay. So, I, will, I can just see uh, what is happening to voltage across one of the valves. So, voltage across say valve 1. Okay. So, I will try to form a table. So, there are 6 rows in this table. So, the 6 rows corresponds to the 6 intervals. Okay. So, what is the first interval? Okay, I am not going by this figure. See, this figure has 6 intervals, but this was corresponding to diode operation. See, please note here this is something which is corresponding to continuous gate current. Okay. So, if I assume a general case where there is a delay, okay, if there is a delay in giving a gate uh, uh, current pulse with respect to instant of natural conduction. What is the first interval? See, suppose I take val 3, val 3 is turned on at alpha. Okay. Now, it continues to be on up to what instant? Alpha plus 120. So, each thyristor valve conducts for 120, okay. but 
bef I mean uh, before the next thyristor in the same commutation group starts conducting, there is one more thyristor valve in the other commutation group which starts conducting that is 4. See 3 is in the upper commutation group, 4 is in the lower commutation group. So, 4 is turned on at see you can refer to this figure where I have considered a, a continuous gate current. So, at 60 plus alpha. So, here the only thing is uh, the, uh, the gate pulses are as good it is as good as giving gate pulse at 0 for valve 3 at 60 for valve 4 and so on. Now, in general it is alpha for valve 3, alpha plus 60 for valve 4, alpha plus 120 for valve 5 and so on. Okay. So, I can say that I can consider the cycle uh, which is of duration 360 degree to be divided into 6 equal parts. Uh, so, each of these is called an interval. So, the first interval is between alpha and alpha plus 60 degrees. Okay. Then the second interval is between alpha plus 60 degree. See what I have written here is in the first case omega O t is greater than alpha and less than alpha plus 60. Then the third interval is alpha plus 120 to alpha plus 180 degrees. Then alpha plus 180 degrees to alpha plus 240 degrees, alpha plus 240 degrees to alpha plus 300 degrees. And the last interval is alpha plus 300 degrees to alpha plus 360 degrees. Okay. Okay. So, we have just listed all the 6 intervals in one full cycle. See this one cycle is for the AC side, our AC side period is 360 degrees please note that. Okay. So, if I take the first interval alpha to alpha plus 60. Uh, what are the valves that conduct? Valve 3 is turned on at alpha. So, there is one more valve in the lower computation groups that is conducting that is 2. So, valves that conduct in the first interval are 2 and 3. Then the next interval 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6. 6 1 1 2 then if you take the next interval of course the cycle repeats now can i write the expression for vd in terms of say ea eb ec looking at the circuit diagram say in the first uh, interval 2 and 3 are conducting so if you look at the circuit diagram from the circuit diagram if 2 and 3 are conducting can i get an expression for vd see it's as good as saying 2 is a short circuit, valve 2 is acting as a short circuit, valve 3 is acting as a short circuit, other valves are open uh, acting as open circuits. So, the positive terminal of the DC side is connected to the positive terminal of E B through this valve 3 which is acting as a short circuit. See what I am trying to say is in the first interval 2 and 3 are conducting. So, they are acting as short circuit. So, the positive terminal of the DC side is connected to the positive terminal of E B the voltage source E B through valve 3. The negative terminal of the DC side is connected to the negative terminal uh, sorry positive terminal of E C through valve 2 which is again acting as short circuit. So, what is V D? E B minus E C. Okay. So, it is E B minus E C. So, let us write that. So, E B minus E C. So, looking at the circuit diagram we can say what is the expression for V d uh, because based on what are the uh, thyristor valves that uh, conduct I mean they are acting as short circuit. So, you can easily get the expression for V d in terms of E a, E b and E c. So, when 3 and 4 conduct E b minus E a. So, the valves that conduct are actually acting as short circuits. Also when 4 and 5 conduct E c minus E a, when 5 and 6 conduct 
AC minus EB. Then when 6 and 1 conduct, EA minus EB. When 1 and 2 conduct, EA minus EC. Fine. This can be easily obtained from the circuit diagram. Then let us look at the voltage across one of the valves, say valve 1. Now, how to get the voltage across valve 1? Again, go back to the circuit diagram. So, 2 and 3 are conducting in the first interval. So, what is the voltage across valve 1? Now, it does not matter whether 2 conducts, the point is 3 is conducting. So, once I know 3 is conducting, 3 is acting as a short circuit and the cathode of valve 1 is connected to the positive terminal of the voltage source E b and the anode of valve 1 is connected to the positive terminal of E a. So, from that I can say what is the voltage across valve 1. So, it is E a minus E b. Yeah. So, I will stick to the definition of voltage across a valve, it is always the voltage of the anode with respect to the cathode. Fine. Similarly, can we say what is the voltage across valve 1 when 3 and 4 conduct, again go back to the circuit diagram. Now, it does not matter whether 4 conducts or not, 3 is conducting. So, it was the same as what happened in the previous interval. So, 3 whenever 3 is conducting, it means it is E a minus E b. Now, in the next interval 4 and 5 conducts. So, please note again it does not matter whether 4 conducts or not, 5 is conducting. What matters is 5 is conducting. So, since 5 is conducting, 5 is acting as a short circuit. So, voltage across valve 1 is E a minus E c. Again in the next interval, it does not matter whether 6 conducts or not, say whether 4 conducts or 6 conducts, it does not matter. The point is 5 is conducting. So, the expression is E a minus E c and the last two cases are very easy. So, in the next two intervals, 1 is conducting. So, 1 is conducting means uh, by our assumption of ideal thyristor valve, this voltage is 0. So, we will try to analyze uh, 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 further by uh, using this table and a few other explanations that were done in this class. So, I will continue <coughs> this in the next class.